Okay, so uh, on the previous video, we discussed the way in which we can derive some equations uh, with object moving at a constant acceleration. So we we take note of that. Um, so we put a bar for the average acceleration in here. So uh, based from the derivation, we uh, take a look at how we can find the displacement as well. So just a quick review again. Um, so uh, in in mechanics, we would usually discuss objects that move with a constant acceleration. So this type of motion is very important because it applies to many situations, including objects that are in free fall near the Earth's surface when we try to neglect air resistance. So the the uh, figure above here shows that the object is moving at a constant acceleration, which is related to the uh, figure below here, which is the graph of velocity versus time, or velocity as a function of time. So uh, when the object is moving at a constant acceleration, we know that at an instant, at an any point, in the time here is always going to be the same. So we could say that the instantaneous acceleration at any point is equal to the value of the average acceleration of the entire time interval. So in that case, we can remove the var on top of the acceleration. Um, um, in, in, in such situation, uh, we would say that the velocity uh, would be increasing or at some point maybe decreasing at the same rate throughout the motion of the velocity versus time graph. Um, so in this case, it's going straight up, so it's moving uh, in a positive uh, direction uh, in terms of velocity. So uh, we could look at the equation in here. So this is one of our first kinematic equation for acceleration. So the acceleration is this is equal to the initial to the final velocity minus the the initial velocity or change in in velocity over change in time. So we can uh, simplify that equation in terms of this uh, written equation, and from here we can find the final velocity if that is not given in terms of constant acceleration. So we have two kinematics equation in this particular scenario here. So we were going to derive equations as we get into this uh, topic. So let's look at this example in here. So we have a car that is moving with a positive velocity of 2.0 meter per second and accelerates to the right at a rate of positive 6.0 meter per second squared uh, at a time of 2.0 seconds. So plugging in the numbers and calculating, we're able to derive that uh, the final velocity after two seconds time would be positive 14 point, uh, 14 .0 meter per second. So we could say that here, the velocity uh, changes linearly according to time with our equation for constant acceleration. So that's one example. So another thing we have to look into is uh, when the velocity is, is going up or going down at a uniform rate, we could find the average velocity to be halfway between the initial velocity and the final velocity. So if we go back to this equation, so um, we look at the area under the graph. The triangle here, that's, that's the additional displacement when the object is accelerating. And at this point, the average, accel the average velocity will be halfway uh, between the initial and the final. So we can get this equation as uh, the average velocity is equal to the, final, the initial velocity plus the final velocity uh, divided by 2. So that's for constant acceleration. So take note, this is only for constant or uniform uh, 
acceleration. So uh, you might not see the word constant in some books, but you might hear uniform. So it means the same thing. And from there, we could plug in the equation for average velocity given from from the previous equation on constant velocity and then we can rearrange the equation to find for the displacement and then plugging in the average velocity for object moving at a constant acceleration and plugging it in here we would end up with this equation so for constant acceleration so this is another equation for constant acceleration so we can make substitution as we go on and then we will end up with this and that's the and this looks familiar so this is another way of deriving that equation we had from the previous video so there are many ways to derive the equation uh, in in finding a kinematic equation for acceleration so this is so this is another way of finding that so let's take a look at this uh, figure again. So we could see here uh, a graph of position versus time. So when the object is accelerating, the trend will be curving up for position versus time. And then if we graph that in terms of velocity versus time, it will end up with this. And if we graph that in terms of acceleration versus time, we would end up with a straight line. So this three plot of uh, function against time are all related. So from there we can derive equations. So again, we could we will derive this equation in here. So we cancel the initial distance, given that the object have started at zero. And from there we could look at the equation. So from the equation so this was derived from the equation acceleration change in velocity over change in time so rearranging that to find the final velocity you would end up with this so rearranging to find for time you will end up with this equation so going back to the equation for finding the displacement for constant acceleration and then plugging in the values we would end up with another equation so this is another equation for constant acceleration so those accelerations that that we box in are important kinematics equations that we will apply in other types of motion so it's going to be very important in our free falling uh, unit so in summary these are some of the kinematic equations uh, that we are going to be using you do not need to memorize this um, however some of this are not find found in uh, the uh, table of equations that will be um, allowed for you to use but uh, from from there you can derive this equation this those equations that we have so that's it for acceleration